Many of you recognize our guest, Juliet Huddy. She's or maybe a, not. Or may, I think they do. I think they do. She's a well-known national television news anchor and personality. And she was a mainstay at the Fox News Channel for the past 20 years until recently. Mm -hmm. And recently, uh, Juliet uh, uh, brought a sexual harassment claim against the longtime Fox anchor Bill O'Reilly, who many people know, and the co-president Jack Abernathy, who many people may not know. And she's Google. here. What? We're going to find Google. out about him. We're going to find <laughs> out about him, I guess. I don't know who he is. Uh, so she's here today in studio to discuss her experience at Fox News. And I assume you went into Fox, you know, and, and let me just finish this introduction okay. before I'm already okay. getting into okay. questions here. Uh, to experience, uh, discuss her experience here at Fox News, not here, because this is not Fox News. <laughs> but What's your plan on giving me a job? No, no. Just, you know, I need one. So. Uh, as well as her thoughts on how Fox News now portrays people of color, uh, how they portray the civil rights issues, and how they're portraying the immigration issues here in the United States. So, you know, first, you know, when how long were you at Fox News? So I started with Fox way back when. I mean, when it was a little baby channel in 1998. Right. I was I, I became the Miami bureau correspondent. So I was chasing hurricanes. And so you were a local like newscaster that. there. I was I was I was on the national network, uh, oh. but I was based in Miami. You know, I like see. when they went when something big happened in South Florida. So the, Florida, the hurricanes coming in. The hurricanes, the tornadoes, right. like, you know, plane crashes in mm, Arkansas. Right. Anything that covers like the, the south. southeast. Yeah. Right. I so was, you were there. Yeah. And and then ha when when was it that you be that you became on a national you were on a national show, right? Well, I started so so doing Fox News Channel out of out of Miami. I was right. on the national show. Then I was moved out to the Los Angeles bureau. You have to you have bureaus all around the country with right. reporters that are ready to go. You know, be sent anywhere to cover all the breaking mm -hmm. news for the Fox News Channel, right. which is based in New York City. I talk with my hands a lot, sorry. It's okay, um, I do too. But <laughs> I actually right after 9-11, I was in the Los Angeles bureau at the time, um, covering all the breaking news on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And after 9-11, Fox News Channel went 24 hours a day and they needed more, you know, more people in the, in the uh, right, New York it, it, Right, it went from yeah. like an hour to right. the so, full, full yes, 24 exactly. hours. Exactly, so that's when I started anchoring there. So I had, you know, sitting at the desk and I started the show that is called, it's called Fox and Friends. I started the weekend version of it. Uh -huh. They didn't have a weekend show, but because obviously of the, the massive news that they needed to cover, they had to go seven days a week. Now, let me ask you a question because obviously Fox News has their own political views and bents. Yes. And I want to get into your whole situation, what okay. happened also with Bill mm -hmm. O'Reilly. Oh, but when, but dress, when you geez. started, but when, yeah, but when, <laughs> but when you started, there, mm -hmm. what were your political views? Were you more liberal? Were you more centered? Were you more right wing? I, I mean, obviously Fox News is a right wing, and now they've gone, they've gone, gone alt right, wait, wait, whatever, wait, right. whatever that may be. I would say that. Um, I mean, I studied political science in college, so I would say I was, you know, I, I was political. I would say I would, I would lean a, a little right of center. Uh -huh. I was not totally center, but I was. I would say I was fiscally conservative, socially liberal. Right. Over the years, I have become much more liberal. I mean, I, and and you know, not only fiscally but also socially as well. And so I would consider myself. I still consider myself an independent because I like to look at every issue and kind of. I don't like to throw myself into a party, basically. What, okay. So was there ever a time? Was there ever a time now you started Fox News? And you have you're more like this center liberal. You're like Bill Clinton, kind of right. like a you know like right. a Clinton yeah. Democrat who's right. not Bernie Sanders, right. but but certainly a, a, a Clinton reasonable and a rational. reasonable rational right. Clinton Democrat. Yes. And uh, what was so now when you're sitting there at the desk and you're doing Fox and Friends uh, and you're reading off the news, at what point in your career did you say I'm not reading news, but I'm now to me, it's almost opinion, opinion and propaganda, whatever, whatever words you want to right. use. And by the way, all the networks do it now. You go to oh, MSNBC, yeah. they have their opinions of and course. propaganda. CNN, it's no longer Walter Cronkite well, reading off the news, if anybody remembers Walter I'll, Cronkite. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you this. And even people would even say Walter Cronkite, you know, leaned way to the left. Peter right. Jennings leaned to the left. Right. Here's here's my whole my whole mentality. When I joined Fox News Channel and I, I would be people would come up to me when they started realizing that Fox News Channel existed, I would get people coming up to me like, why do you work for that? You know, and, and it was, I was constantly getting barraged, you know, with, with, you know, insults and everything because they thought it was this whole crazy right wing conservative. And I said, you know, initially I started working there and I, I truly thought, here's the thing. Yes, they give the right point of view, but we don't really hear from the right on 
CNN at the time. We didn't hear really from you know the the, the big networks, the ABCs, were, NBC, CBSs. So I thought this is a good thing. I want to hear the other were, side. Were you giving a point when you were giving your opinion and point of view? Mm -hmm. Was it your opinion or point of view, or was it the producer's opinion and said this is the position you have to take? Nobody ever told me what to say. Nobody ever told me what to say when I was there. I will tell you that as a young you know, journalist that was starting out and I get this great job. I'll admit to you, yes, early on, I kind of, I kind of knew there were certain stories where I felt like I, you could just sense that they want, they, they wanted to go a certain way. You right. know, you want, you, you sense that, that the bosses who have meetings every morning with all the, you know, the big producers of all the different shows, you get a sense when those meetings start to filter down and down and down to us that they want to go a certain way with the topic. They'll, they'll create a segment and they'll skew it in a way that it, it leaned to the right. Now, I, it, it's definitely gone a lot more extreme in, in recent years. But I felt that I sometimes had to, I felt like I sometimes had to, to sort of fit my, my comments or hold comments back. Right. That's probably, you know, which is did to anybody, me it's Did like, anybody ever say anything to you like, oh, you know what, that comment you said was a little, is that really in line with no, what we believe in no, at Fox? No, but I will say, no. That nobody ever said that to me, but I will. I'm say, always curious about. You oh, know, I, believe yeah, me. Yeah. But you would hear from the viewers. Right. I mean, you would. I, you know, if I said, if I said, well, I think this this uh, Barack Obama seems like a fine man. Oh, you know, it was it was. You know, what what are you doing on this channel? Go to CNN. Go to MSNBC. And I right. was like, oh my but, god. But so my you got, personality. So you, got, so you kind of got like berated into following in line. Almost, I, well, that in was a way. that was my problem, and that's why right. that's why <laughs> that's why I'm. I'm not there anymore. That right. I, I I had a hard time keeping my mouth shut, and sometimes uh -huh. I wouldn't be able. You know, I would give the other side, and I would you know my my true opinion, um, but you could just tell that it was the producers after the show would be a little annoyed, and um, and well, I have a big mouth. You you <laughs> had you had I, I assume I don't I, I was I, that's all, okay. You're all not deference. I never I never really watched. Don't, I, uh, well, I don't I'm blame sorry. You. I'm, I'm it's okay. Okay. You had other people. Did other people have different opinions, or was everybody kind of in lockstep? in line the, with you know this whole fallacy that everybody i thought works for yes. fox news right. is one of, no i mean i'm telling you especially in the early days i would say up until 2007 when i i left fox news to go to a, a show called the morning show with mike and juliet it was still done by fox 21st uh -huh. century fox but right. i was still kind of away from the fox news thing but um you know everybody had there were there were lots of people that i worked with my my co-anchor on fox and friends uh, was very, very left. You know, he just knew certain times to let the guest, who happened to be the right winger, right. say that. And you know, and so we would try that. That's him, Mike Jarek, as a matter and, of fact. And, and did was there ever a point in time where you 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 said, okay, I I went into the news business yes. to read the news. Yeah. This is, you know, we're just going to report the news. I'm going to try to be as honest and fair as I can. Yes. And then you woke up one morning and you said, and maybe you, maybe that never happens, I don't know. And you woke up one morning and you said, you know, I'm on Fox News and I'm saying things that maybe aren't, I, I don't believe and I'm well, really saying you, things that maybe are not, are not the 100% reality of what's when going I on. Saw, there always seemed to be a little bit of, of a little bit of agenda up from, from 1998 until 2007 when I left. Uh -huh. But I was always able to kind of massage it and sort of, you know, not not t totally go to the right. I, I you know I was able to kind of I was able to do a good show. We we right. were able to do a good and I thought fair and fair and balanced show. Right, right. When I came back after my syndicated show was canceled and I started filling in on the various day parts of, of Fox News, including Fox and Friends, that's when I noticed. Now this was a, this was late two thousand nine. That's when I noticed things had really changed because and it was, it was like it was i think around the time barack obama became president second term yes yeah, the second, second term. term or the first term that the the well actually because 2009, the, was, 2009 his first term. Was, right. was the first term um that's when i noticed things were starting to get a little weird by the second term it, it seemed like we we they had gone off the charts who's they who is they i would say you know i would say the the guru who is who has since passed away, Roger Ailes, right. who was who was he was the kingmaker there. He was he was the brains behind Fox News Channel in in, in all of its wonderfulness and all of its horribleness. Right. right. Um, and he was the guy who sort of set the agenda. I think after the second the re-election of Barack Obama, I think that in my mind, and I, and I think other pundits who who had been on Fox News Channel's minds who have since left, that was when things went off the rails. That's when th it became extremely clear that there was an agenda almost like to the point where it was like 
hey man, did, we have an agenda. Did, did anybody ever come to you and say, this is the agenda? Or no, how, how did they, no. how did they, you say, I, I just find it interesting, like, okay, they never came I'll to the you house. How, 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 how does that happen? It happens because, for, at least for me, when I would go in in the morning and I would fill in, let's say on Fox and Friends, it's a story. Right. It's a show and, that and by starts, the way, it's, I'm laughing at all the hearts. I don't need I know, to interrupt. I keep, so, I keep looking at the hearts. So we're, we're having this really serious conversation, <laughs> and then there's like all these hearts going on behind us here. We should just go yeah, to black. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, what, like I said, the 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 shows. The, the, the executive producers and the big producers of the shows have the meetings with the big, big executives starting the day off. So they kind of, they have meetings on the phone very early. So they kind of get the idea from the bosses. The left is right. Roger Ailes, who has since uh, right. passed away. But they get the sort of, the, the temperature and, and they set the climate. So when I came back in, in 2010, 11, I was going to Fox and Friends in the morning and I was, I, there's so much paperwork that you have to go to. It's like three in the morning that you get there, you're getting ready for a show. There's like, I mean, you're, you're literally working with a stack of like two, right. two inches worth of just papers that you right. have to go it's, through and it's, highlight. It's and, like us at the Brad Squeeze Show. We're exactly. here at three in the morning <laughs> exactly. preparing for our exactly. show. Right. Well, to be fair, we, yeah, are, sure. we were on at six <laughs> o'clock in the morning, but, but you get so much information. So right. you don't necessarily have time to prep and go through all the scripts that are going to be coming up on the teleprompter. Mm -hmm. Most of most of the shows are not. You don't read the teleprompter. You you just kind of ad lib. But so all of a sudden, I would be sitting there, and you you know the show would start. Did did and the music would start, and you'd see this this script come up on the teleprompter, and it's basically like you know Barack Obama is the devil. And I'm as I'm reading, I'm like Barack Obama, Obama is the, the, in Detroit. Right, you know, right, and right. you try to ad lib, and that's when I started thinking, man, things have really gone off the rails. So, and so when I would get so it was more the producers really pushing the producers creating, pushing the talent yeah, of where to where of, you want to of what, what the writers should be writing, of what the what the segments should be about, where they should, what the angle is of the segments. I mean, I, there would be a segment on you know uh, a little kid who who won you know his horse won at, at the 4-H thing or whatever, right. I don't know, forces do for right, rage, right. but you know what I'm saying. And somehow it would be turned into some like right wing agenda. You know, the little kid, well, you know, lost to a you know an immigrant. I mean, it was, it was well, 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 you know, know things weren't making sense. It, you know, I, I think I think scaring people gets a lot more ratings than it's my two well, cents. I, you know, scaring people yeah. gets a lot more ratings than making people feel good about themselves. Well, I think that you, if you if you look up Fox News Channel now, I I never watch it anymore. I can't. It, it I right. literally for for a million reasons. But I you know when you switch fire, when you see the you know the things on the internet, I, I just sit there and I just go, man, they have just sold out and they are proud. But their supporters, I mean, are so unbelievably. Yeah. Uh, a passionate, I would say. And yes, because because they're almost in a way everybody's brainwashing everybody today, and I mean reality. Nobody even understands what reality is to me anymore. I completely agree. You know, I, yeah. and, and people are getting their reality from what they're watching. So if Which you is watch, scary. so if you watch Fox News, that's that's your reality. If you watch, see, you, I mean, you could literally right. talk to two different people. And one person watches Fox News, one person watches MSNBC, and a third person watches CNN, and they have three completely different realities of life. Well, it's the, 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 the funniest thing is when you watch like you know, the seven o'clock news or whatever it is, CNN will, have, will lead with one story, MSN will lead, MSNBC will lead probably with the same story, and then Fox has got a completely thing, you know, different thing that's like five stories down on right. CNN's you, you you know, know, you know, agenda, so it's... I mean, you're a news person. I mean, I mean, I, I always say this, you know, when I have these discussions about Fox and everything. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, what's gonna what's gonna put more eyes on the TV camera? Well, you know the I, whole the whole co the cliche: if it bleeds, it leads. Exactly. And that, that, right. That's usually right, like exactly, a local right, right. TV you know, thing. Like, but okay, so here here's here's two things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, immigrant doctor saves, you know, 20 lives. Everybody's all healthy now and they're all leaving the hospital. You okay? likely will not see that on Fox News I mean, that's a, I mean that's, a happy, that's a happy story. Right. It's not going to make people watch. Right. Or yeah. immig immigrant doctor goes crazy in hospital and shoots 20 people. No. Then that's, you know. See, I mean, that, see that's no. I see because sometimes I think. Not, you know, that, I, I, not that I know of any immigrant right, doctor. Right. That ever <laughs> right. Right. Well, I, sometimes I think. People go a little too crazy. People who don't like Fox News Channel, people who hate Republicans, go a little too crazy. Sort of cr creating, a, a, you know, a narrative about Fox News Channel that is not there. You know, they do do stories. I mean, I, I, you know, I was on yesterday, last night, reading about an, a story about Emerson, and, and I was like, oh, they actually did a story, and it was on FoxNews.com, and it seemed fair. You know, it was factual, and it, it was like, okay, that's cool. I mean, it's not going to be up there leading. Well, I've seen I've newscasts, seen I've though. seen Fox newscasts where they did an entire thing about quote 
illegal, well, everybody calls them illegal immigrants, them being people who are here out of status. There's nothing illegal, by the way. This is one thing I hate about the news. There is absolutely nothing illegal about being in, in the United States undocumented. It's a civil offense. It's not a criminal offense. But That's the way, thing but the out. way the news has made it out to be is that they've made it out that people they are breaking criminal laws. They're breaking a civil law. But Brad, and, everybody has, every, you know, so the left has an agenda, right. and the right has an right. agenda. So they use and words. There's got to be a way they, they, to figure out. Right. They but use, you're right. They use words. Lightning and, rod and, words. Right. Lightning yeah. rod words. And then when you know there's there's going to be a situation where somebody who's an immigrant, go, maybe maybe you know uh, even what happened at at the school, maybe he's a, you know I don't we don't know who he is. Yeah. You know he'll come out. It's a dreamer. God forbid, okay, and right. now all of a sudden Trump will come out, kick all the dreamers well, out, it's a lead, dangerous... that'll be leading that, Fox right. News I don't know. I'm not saying that, that happened. That, we don't know who the, who the shooter was in Florida. Uh, but, you know, if there's, if there's ever, you know, the statistics don't bear it out. The statistics don't bear out what is, to me at least, what is being portrayed on Fox, you know, because they'll have a whole show about illegal immigrant kills. Right. There was that illegal immigrant who killed a pretty... Pretty uh, right. white, white, bl Coast. white blonde uh, girl. They they spent fifty hours about this. Right. Okay. Scaring the hell out of you know the quote unquote white people who live in you know Midwest right. Tennessee, whatever. Not talking you know. about the 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 immigrant who was here illegally but has been here for but, years but, who called to report but, on the but, robbery. But, but you know. But not only that. But not only that. But more importantly, to me, the the statistics don't bear out what they're spending their time on. OK, 96, 90, every statistic shows it. 95, 96, 97 percent of the crimes committed in America are committed by people who are born in America. It's a dis disproportionate number of Americans are in jail versus immigrants on a proportional basis, on a numbers basis. And the reason is this. And nobody talks about it. And then we're going to get into your whole story. <laughs> I just got to give you my two cents. OK, no, you want to know you want to know why you want to know why that is? Because if you're an immigrant, you get a background check before you come to America. You get interviewed to get visas, you get you get to get a green card, right. to become a citizen. Yes, people fall through the cracks. Right. Yes, there's bad people everywhere, but you get fingerprinted. Mm -hmm. When you are born in America, nobody fingerprints you. I don't know where people got this idea that if you're born in America, you are a safe person, right. but if you're <laughs> born somewhere else, you're not. Right. Yet, if, if we really want to be safe, let's fingerprint everybody. Right. Just, just because you were born in, in, in Louisiana makes you any safer than a guy who was born in Bangladesh. Right. You know, so. so and the fact, is, the fact is that there are immigrants, illegal immigrants who do bad things. Of course. There are, there are Americans who do bad things. It's very, of course. It's like, we, I'm just like, saying this is the disproportionate. I agree. I 100 and, and, and agree. And they, 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 but, but right. like Barack Obama, he, I think he tweeted this, it was like about five months ago. He said it, it was so perfect. He said, look, most of us, we want good things for this country. We want people who do good things, people who are immigrants who came here as youngsters, who had, it wasn't their choice, we, they had nothing to do with it. We, we want these people to do well. We want, we want our, our country to be safe. There's got to be a way that we can make things easy, make things safe for everybody, make things fair for everybody. But you have to, everybody's sort of got to push away all of the, the static coming from the extreme right, coming from the extreme left, and look at things individually. We've all got to just people, take a people, pause. People, people forget there's human beings here. Well, look at people, social media. People, That's people, all I have to people, say. Look people, at social media and see the, the, people, the people, evil things that people, people say people on social forget, media. People forget they're human beings. P people, social media, I mean, I love it to death. I think the internet is the greatest thing in the world, but it has opened up this sort of Pandora's box for people to just behave like animals. I mean, just saying the most horrible things. I mean, you see, it, it's reality shows, everything. People are, they've just, we've lost our minds and we've, we've come to accept that it's okay to tweet somebody and say horrible things to them and say, you deserve to be uh, sexually assaulted. You, if you, you want to really see what sexual assault is like since you, you know, accuse Bill O'Reilly of something, you, here's, you know, you should feel like, you should, you should see what it's really like, you know, and it's, people are crazy. Right, yeah. People say the most horrific things and it's just become so normal so, now. So, We've normalized so, so it. What, so let me ask you this question before and we'll, we'll change topics in mm -hmm. a second. But what, what's your opinion of what Fox News is today and how they are, how they are, um, you know, really pushing a certain agenda Right. More of an, I, I guess, I guess the term would be an Anglo-American agenda. I guess I don't know what they're, I don't know what you would call, you know. It's that they 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 call themselves right, alt right. I think it's almost like an alternate reality of what's going on. They there were a lot of people who who voted for Donald Trump, and a lot of people who continue to support Donald Trump despite his 
uh, mind-blowing behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm, I'm being kind. Right. Um, that is who Fox I is appealing to, and and it's bizarre to me. And I, I will say this because I'm going. I, you know, I, I know I sound like a hypocrite because I worked there for many years at, at at Fox News Channel on and off. But but when I started there, I truly felt like this this was this is going to be a cool thing. We are we're going to hear from the right. We may not agree with what the right says, but we're going to hear both sides. You know, we weren't seeing that on other networks, um, I think, to the degree that Fox did when when it first started. Right. I think it went off the rails. And, right. and, and I'm disappointed with it. I mean, I have a lot of friends who still work there, producers, talent, people who are just kind of, you know, they get a paycheck, though. And But it's sort of like you're selling your soul. I, I always say that to some, a couple of my girlfriends who work there. And I'm like, <laughs> selling your soul. But, of yeah. course, it's easy for me to say because, right, right, right. you know, I'm you're, not you're there, not there anymore, anymore now. But, yeah, I mean, you really are because... I mean, I mean, you, you look at, you know, even some of the people who who work for Donald Trump and and stand behind him after some of the things that he says, you're like, how could that? How I have, could that? How I have could friends that even who be? work for him and I just sit there and I go, how could that be? How could you just sit there and just turn a blind because eye? Because I think a lot of people, they, they are excited about they're excited about their paychecks. They're excited about keeping their a position, job, their, their positions. positions. I mean, you right. know, yeah. It's so so your your time at Fox came to an end, <laughs> yes, right? It did. Right. So oh, you, you want to talk about that? I know you have a non disclosure agreement, so I'm not I do. sure. You know, we never discuss this ahead of time, so you know, we just we just go on the fly. I mean, here. I think you know. So, like, so what happens is you can, that you're allowed to talk about? <laughs> well, you, you, I'll say you, the, the best thing. First of all, yeah. that, that dress, by the way, that that was not from my wardrobe. I think I was there that day, and I. I you wasn't remember supposed that dress? to be. Yes, I do because okay. I was horrified mm -hmm. by the by cleavage that uh -huh. was showing. Right. Um, hence me being you know, buttoned up. But um, <laughs> I I, uh, I left Fox News Channel because right. I, I had a, a non disclosure agreement, which I, I'm not supposed to talk about, but I'm talking about it because mm -hmm. I'm allowed to say right. Right, screw, screw it. it. Screw it. Um, You're allowed to say whatever you want because we're yeah. not. We're, this is okay. So you can say whatever you want. it, you, you know, say the, it. the information got out there um, it, by the New York Times. They did, right. an, uh, you know, an amazing right. investigative uh, report, and they, you know, they found out what I had basically mm -hmm. settled about and for. Right. Um, and I, I had been harassed. Um, I had been you targeted. Were, you, were, you were harassed. I was before. harassed while I was at Fox News uh -huh. Channel. Um, I think it's fairly obvious who it was. <laughs> you see Bill O'Reilly's right. face everywhere. Right. right. And Jack Abernathy. Right, right, right. right. We, won't, we won't say who it was, but we uh, have that guy's yeah. face. Yeah. He you was remember a, him. He, he wasn't He wasn't terribly good to you. He's now the nice CEO you. of Fox News Channel. Right. So uh, despite the, um, you know, monies being paid out to settle. And by the way, when everybody sees, you know, you see a settlement and you think, oh, she must be loaded now. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm financially struggling seriously. Right. You know, half of it goes to lawyers and goes to taxes. Right, so right, right, right. There wasn't much left. Right. But everybody thinks, oh, she's, you know, she's sitting pretty. No. And, and the other thing is I can't, it, it's difficult to find a job now back on television, despite the fact that people, you know, have seen what's happened with Bill O'Reilly and they've seen, there's been so many other women that he apparently had, uh, you know, settlements with. I still am having a hard time finding a job on television, so really? which is very interesting. Right, I which guess. is which is how you ended up. Here. <laughs> which is no, 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 no. I've been doing radio. Right, right. It's been good, really good, nice. Good, 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 good. <laughs> uh, so, so um, you know, you know, what kind of, you know, how do you, you know, in terms of workplace environment now? I mean, I guess at some point in time, women accepted it. Now it's not as acceptable anymore. And in terms of acceptance, it's not like they enjoyed. Have being sexually harassed. I can't imagine anybody would enjoy that. I can't imagine. But it was more of acceptance of, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to rock well, the boat. It's different in everybody's case. I mean, right. I will say that, you know, my experience was that I was trying to, I basically, I knew that if I had gone to human resources immediately, which is what you're supposed to do, right. that I would have a target on my back and I would walk out of there, and there would be shoot, you know, they'd and, be shooting the bows and arrows and, at and me. And by the way, I'm just reading the the things that come here. People are saying Fox News is the devil. Fox News is Republican. I don't watch them Fox News. You know, oh, so yeah. people mean, don't like what they stand for. Certainly, minorities don't. I don't like what they stand uh, for. Uh, no. You know, certainly minorities don't. Immigrants don't. And and certainly you don't. I mean, you experienced as a woman. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, I, what, what, is, what upsets me now is that the people that were complicit in sort of covering up for the Bill O'Reilly's and the Roger Ailes, who was, who was right. you know, basically run out of there because of sexual harassment allegations, um, the people that were complicit, the people that knew what was going on, the people that were, that were the, the lawyers that were, you know, getting involved in all these settlement agreements, knowing that they were keeping people like Bill O'Reilly, this guy was a pervert. I mean, this guy was doing it 
to it. I had no idea because of this non-disclosure agreement. So right. when I finally... You thought it was just you. I thought it was me. And I was so scared to come forward. And the only right. reason I did was because I couldn't nobody take it anymore. I had no idea. Nobody talked about it. I finally decided to come forward and all of a sudden, you know, the next thing I know, it's blowing up and there's right. five other women, you know, one of whom I was actually good friends with back in the day. You know, I'm like, wow, you know, man. I don't, I, don't get, I don't get the excuse this is locker room talk. You know, even like when Trump did it, I don't get it because I don't talk like that. Well, you, you know, know I, and I don't, you know, and certainly I, this is my office is is majority women. Mm. You know, if somebody said to me, oh, Julie, you look hot today. If some guys, I wouldn't be like, OK, human resources. Right, you know, right, like right. to me, oh, I thought there are levels yeah, right, where it's right, like, right, all right, calm down, appreciate everybody. All right, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it. If, nice it compliment. if it's, you know, you look hot today, right. you know, come on in and closes the door. And he's somebody that could, you know, has uh, can affect my career Correct. and is making and me feel, feel like comfortable. Yeah. That, then right. that goes into and make, another and making sort of sort of innuendos or suggestions yeah. that. But again, you feel you're scared. I was scared. I mean, I admit it. I was I was I was a wimp. I was weak. I was scared to come out. And the right. fact is that when I finally did come out, they didn't want to hire me. They didn't want to protect me. They wanted to just scoop me out of there. And shut me up, and so that's why I'm, I'm, you know, I have no, I have no job. So, so at what point? At what point? So this was going on for years. Uh, at what point did you say enough is enough? Were I you had, the first person to come out? I was the second person you were the to second come person. out. Gretchen what, Carlson was the right, first. What person. was so? What made you come out? Was it that Gretchen gave you the confidence the, to come the out? Last or? Time I, the, the last sexual harassment incident that I had was, I believe, it was 2012. At that point, I had gone. I had left Fox News. Mm -hmm. And I had gone over to the local Fox affiliate here in New York City, Fox 5. And I was anchoring very early in the morning. And, you know, while I was there, they basically weren't letting me do any other you know, any other shows or anything else. And they it was very clear that they were trying to get me to, to quit. And somebody who had had this breadth of experience that I had and had success, they were basically shoving me into the show that, you know, basically nobody watched. They wouldn't let me go out and do right, anything right. to represent the station. It was, the, it was obvious they, they were trying to... They put you on the graveyard shift. They did. Right, and the equivalent years, of the graveyard shift. And for four years, I, I tried. I was like, you know what? I, I'm going to show them. I'm a team player and I'm, I, I can do this. You know, I can handle it. And I just thought eventually somebody's going to go, she's awesome. Well, why? Right. You know, we can't do this to her anymore. Right. But they didn't. And I finally just said, that's it. When, when Gretchen came out and I saw all that stuff about her accusing Roger Ailes of sexual harassment, Full disclosure: Roger Ailes was my is my brother was my brother's godfather, and he was right. a longtime family friend. And, and and was also he he was a guy that I considered for many years and like he, a father. And he, and he allowed this to happen. He he not only allowed it to happen, he he, he knew it was it. happening even after it happened. And didn't do anything to stop it. No, and and that's that's when I just went wow, you know, right. my entire world just turned upside down. I was right. like, what is going on here? It was it was depressing. God. Yeah, but I can only imagine. I can only imagine. But so you, uh, this is an immigration show, by the way. Yes. Okay, and you have an immigration story, I'm told. I do. What is your immigration weird, story? This is the weirdest thing. What? So, my great 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 great, great ancestor, Captain Joshua Huddy. Uh huh. Um, he right. was. Is a, this is like an immigration story from the Mayflower. This was a, a revolution. He was a revolutionary war hero, uh -huh. a scamp, a scoundrel, but a revolutionary right. war right. hero. So, he, so an immigration story from two hundred years so ago. Like, yes, yes, yes. He right. apparently he was a patriot and he was fighting the British and he ended up being. How do you know by, this? Because it's he's a, a famous war hero. Oh, and, this and, is, you know, and you know. My father has done all this genealogy, genealogy stuff right. and is actually writing mm -hmm. a book. Yeah, um, I, did, I did the um, the twenty three and me oh, thing, I just, and I, you you spit in the cup. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm 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 related to nobody famous. <laughs> Does it tell you who you're related to? <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden, like your fourth generation, you know, like somebody oh. in California is like, oh, your fourth generation cousin. Okay, yeah. Like, so my dad right. has done apparently the research right. on this, and and yeah, but he's he was he was captured by the British. He jumped off this British warship down in, uh, right off of, in the Navasink River off of right. Rumson, New Jersey. He escaped and then he was captured again. He was hung down in uh, Sands Point, I think it's called, whatever it is, down mm -hmm. there. And um, uh, he became, it became part of an international, the first international, there he is, Josh, Captain Joshua oh, Huddy. Right. Jack, as he was known, being yes. taken away. Apparently he was a bad dude, though. He had cheated on his wife and was kind of a... Kind of a low life. Right. Doesn't surprise me, actually, knowing some people in my family. But, <laughs> so, but that anyway. so, so that was it. So that was it. it. Yeah. It was All good. right. Well, we got to get back to immigration here. <laughs> All right. That was a wonderful story. Captain Jack. Captain was your, Jack. Uh, yes. A revolutionary uh, Yeah. My, my, my great grandparents <laughs> came into Ellis Island. So. Oh, very old. Well, look at yeah, you. Well, we yeah. could go down to the, the uh, they've got a park yeah. down there in, in uh, yeah. Tom's River, New yeah. Jersey. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I really appreciate you coming on. You sound on. fascinated. You're like, yeah, let's not go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's go <laughs> never. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you for having me Well, here. you were awesome. Thank you. And thank you for being we here. We were only supposed to come on for like 10, 15 minutes. Oh, God. But I got, well, it's, I, I talk got, like a magpie. I talk, too, and we're like talking over each other, <laughs> but but I, I find you fascinating. So Sorry. thank you very much. <laughs>